Okay, hi guys. This is uh, my first video after such uh, quite some time. Um, this is special shout out for one of my subscriber. Um, he's asking question about um, why can we use a derate takeoff on a contaminated runway, but uh, we are not able to use assumed temperature on a on a contaminated runway. So. Um, special shout out for um, Mr. Zaki Zemerdilin. He's, um, I hope I pronounced correctly his name, he's from Turkey. He's doing his uh, training as well to be a pilot. So, good luck to that. And um, so, without further ado, the introduction. Um, we take the first scenario. If we're using, um, if we're using a D rate takeoff, so now you have the, the aircraft itself. So, but this is the wings, <laughs> the length of the aircraft. So if we are using a derated takeoff, let's say if you have uh, this much of thrust on the aircraft coming out, it's a very simplistic way of um, making uh, the visual representation of the aircraft thrust. What's going to happen is with derate, we will guarantee we're telling the aircraft not to use the full thrust that they're going to have. So let's say we're going to cut by 25%. So we're going to have a D rate by 25%. This aircraft will never, ever exceed beyond that uh, thrust limit. So what's going to happen during the takeoff roll? It will only go that much. And that's the only thrust that it's going to have. So um, let's say you're on a, on a runway. So the, you're going to have this entire length of the runway and at this point uh, you have passed your V1 speed and you're going to commit yourself for a takeoff and then at that, after that critical phase you, you will just lose an engine. So imagine when you lose an engine at this stage, this amount of thrust that you have and this is your uh, say center of gravity. Uh, this will cause a yawing moment going this way. So the pilot will displace the rudder pedal and that will displace, I'm going to use a green color for this one, will displace the rudder of the aircraft. And this displacement of the rudder will create another yawing moment to offset this yawing moment. And this yawing moment should be able to neutralize that yawing moment and the aircraft will continue its trajectory um, let's use a yellow one uh, to continue straight and passing the speed of a VR which is a rotational speed the aircraft will continue and pilot will get airborne so that is the first case everything is fine and dandy for the derated takeoff using a derate, uh, fixed derate takeoff thrust now we go for the next case of a contaminated runway, but using a um, using a assumed temperature. So we're back to the same story. Uh, we have this in the aircraft, and and now we have um, the full length of the aircraft. Sorry, the full uh, thrust of the aircraft remains the same. Uh, this is a hundred percent. Now, but now. You're, you're using an assumed temperature. Remember, this is not D-rate. You have the entire length or strength of the aircraft, um, full, full uh, rated thrust. But because you're using assumed temperature, you're going to have a lower thrust setting. So instead of full, you're going to use only that much. And only that much will be used for the takeoff. I'm going to make a point here. This is the point where we assume our temperature and uh, this were how much thrust we're gonna have in simplistic form without much of the numbers involved purely on graph. Now you're cruising along on a takeoff roll and you pass your V1 speed. This is the runway. You pass V1 and suddenly you lose an engine. So you completely lose all the available thrust on the on this engine. However you only use that much of a uh, thrust at the moment. The pilot has a chance and a uh, opportunity if he sees the runway is uh, nearing the end 
And uh, for whatever reason, he wants to use full thrust, and he's gonna pass through, let's say, his VR further down, and now he decided to go full thrust, so he can push the throttle forward or press the toga button again, and then the thrust now will go all full, the max rated takeoff thrust, and because of that, it will create a much bigger uh, yawing moment, and Sensing that the pilot might displace the um, the rudder pedal over here, and that will cause the aircraft to deflect the rudder. However, this time, despite despite the displacement, the yawing moment from the same rudder from the same rudder will only be that much, and you will not be able to counter effect this yawing moment. So the aircraft will start to slowly veer to the, uh, in this case, uh, to the other side of the runway. And by veering to the other side, it means that as the speed builds up, the aircraft is losing its directional control. And because of that as well, if you're reaching VR, you cannot stop anymore on the runway. And once you get airborne, the wing will start to drop, aircraft will start to turn, and will, uh, the, uh, will start to bank, and it will create much more cont controllability issue. So it will be very unsafe Imagine if this is a snowy, icy runway, it's going to be uh, even more slippery and con hence the word contaminated and that will cause uh, additional uh, flying uh, safety issue. So no derate, uh, sorry, uh, no um, assumed temperature for contaminated runway, however derate is acceptable, uh, this for this reason. Uh, I do stand corrected if there's a new fact, but this is what my understanding on how this uh, decision came about with regards to contaminated runway with derate but without seam temperature. So, all the best. Good luck.